take your hymnal tonight, turn to page 154, How Firm a Foundation. Let's stand together and sing the first and the last, 154. So let's do that second verse. You need to learn these old hymns. And so we'll have to do a hymn sing, but this is a great old hymn. Let's do that second verse. You ready? Fear not, I am with thee. job tonight on that. Turn around and smile and wave at somebody before you're seated tonight as our pastor comes. Amen. Good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. We appreciate each one being here. Appreciate our visitors. If you're here for the first time, if you lift up your hand, we'll send the usher by to see you, give you a card. But we want to remind you now, Wednesday night at 730, our midweek service, but before that, the ladies' prayer circle on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, bring a covered dish and a league and crow will be speaking to the ladies on that night. The sign-ups for the youth going to Cage Cove and also uh, the Vacation Bible School sign-ups are in the foyer. If you want to go by and sign up for either of these. Now, the Sunday School teachers' meeting is May the 16th at 545 in the Sunday School building. And then we're going to have a baby dedication service on June the 6th. So get your baby's name and gender and, of course, the date of birth and turn them in to Sammy or myself, and we'll be care, sure and take care of that. Today's been a blessing. We had a good offering this morning, and I uh, took up, I believe, 6000 and something this morning, and I've already got, let me read this, in memory of Crawford Davis, his work in Truth for Youth and the good memories of the sport at uh, Cage Cove, $5,000 given to the new bus fund from the Mullinax family, the memory of Crawford, and I appreciate that. And listen, if you give to the bus fund, we have special envelopes out there, not the tithing envelope, but the others, just put it in there and label it bus fund or whatever, and put it in the offering if you're going to do it that way. And if you don't want to do it that way, you can give it any way you want to. And then also, I had a gentleman come up and hand me $1,000 a year, so we've got uh, 6000 more right here. That's over... 12, 13,000 somewhere today. We've got 16,000 to 10 ready to go. So actually, we've raised $26,000. Well, already. hallelujah. So Amen. we need about 8,000 in the bus to pay for it. Yeah, the one that we're looking at, if we if that's the one we trade for, well, that, that'll take care of it. But isn't it good how God blesses? If, go, if God's in something, it'll go. It'll go. I've seen that down through the years. If God's in it, we'll get it. All right, us, as you come. If you're real, please. I'm not going to put this in this regular offering because we've got the other list out here. I'm going to add it together, and then we'll put it 
in the fund tomorrow morning, if that's all right with the church. You can trust me with it that long. But I, got, I will give you a report on it and all as we go. Amen. Brother Daniel, lead us in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another privilege to be back in your house again tonight. Lord, thank you for what we already felt here tonight. Be with Sammy as he leads the choir, all the special singers. Be with our pastor as he comes to break the bread of life. Just give us what we stand in need of tonight, Lord. We want to thank you for that mercy and that grace, that grace that's greater than all of our sins. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. We could stand here all night and just thank you forever, Lord. We just want to thank you for salvation. Yes. Thank you for going to that cross. Thank you on that third day. You got up out of that grave with us. Give death hell the grave with you. Thank you for being so good to yes, us. Yes, Lord. Lord. Be with this offer. Multiply it over and over yes. again, and we'll be careful to praise you. For us in Jesus' name I ask. Amen. 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 Amen.
Jesus. Wondrously fair. And they say that in splendor, well, it's far beyond compare. In a place that's called heaven, my soul longs to be. For where Jesus is, it will be heaven for me. If the walls there, they were not jasper, and the streets, they were not gold. And if my mansion is still crumbled, and the folks, they all still grew old, well, still I see. been longing, longing to see, <laughs> for Jesus you will be what makes it heaven for me. Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you for the good singing tonight. We appreciate it. If you will, turn in your Bible to uh, Numbers chapter number 17. Numbers chapter number 17 on page 190. 
190 in the Old Schofield Bible. Numbers chapter 17, verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take of every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers, of all their princes according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod, and thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi, for one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom. And I will make to cease from me the murmuring of the children of Israel whereby they murmur against you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece for each prince, one, according to their father's houses, even twelve rods, and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and blossoms, blossom and yielded almonds. Now I want to talk a little bit about Aaron's rod, a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the rod speaks of authority and power and protection. Aaron's rod was used to bring life upon Egypt in Exodus chapter number 8. Moses' rod were upheld, uh, brought hail and lightning in Exodus chapter 9. It also brought locusts in Exodus 10. And it caused to see the sea depart in Exodus 14. And it smote the rock in Horeb. And so it was first used as a weapon and then as a symbol of authority, a very important instrument indeed. Now there are many types of Christ in the Bible and I love type. I love typology. I love to study typology. And so we can be blessed by musing upon this great scripture here. And of course, uh, this instrument that is mentioned here, Aaron's rod. Now, if we read slowly and carefully, meditating on this particular truth, we'll feel the blessing of God down in our soul. We will also observe several features concerning this particular rod which is a type and a picture of Jesus Christ. First of all, it is a type of Jesus in its sanctification. This rod was set apart. It was set apart from all others, no matter how great they were. Now, whenever we start meditating on this, we realize that Jesus is the one and the only man that could redeem fallen man. There are great men in the Bible that we read about, that we enjoy reading about, and even emulating. We talk about Abraham, we talk about David, we talk about Paul the Apostle, we talk about Elijah and Elisha and other great people in the Bible. They were all great, but none of them could compare with the Son of God. So we read about great uh, characters in the Bible who are really worthy of our notice, worthy of our study, worthy of our emulation. But the name that we have here, the name of the high priest, was on Aaron's rod, not on the others, but on Aaron's rod in particular. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 15, the Bible says, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom to honor and power everlasting. Amen. And then we know that a potentate is the sovereign, or the power, the king, the prince, the ruler, etc. Jesus is the supreme one. He's above every name. Every name that is named, uh, Jesus is greater. You remember Philippians said uh, that God hath highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. 
to the glory of God the Father. Boy, I tell you, I love these characters in the Bible. You know, I love to read about how God called Mary to be the mother of Christ's body, to give him a body. And you know, I thank God that we have those testimonies in the Bible. But you know, I tell you, I love Mary. I love Isaac. I love Jacob. I love Abraham. I love David. I love to read about them. But I don't pray to any of them. I don't ever call upon them. I had a mama that I believe was as saintly as most any woman on this earth during our time. But I don't pray to my mama. I'm looking forward to seeing her someday. I have a love for her. I never have whispered a prayer to her. I have never said, Mama, tell Jesus about me. Tell Jesus I love him. Tell Jesus to help me. I've never called on my mama because she's not my mediator. Brother, she was my mother and I love her and I'll see her one day. I'll hug her old neck again in a glorified body. But I tell you, Jesus is different than all. I'm talking about someone, praise God, that is sanctified. He's set apart. And I'm talking about this also represents his great powerful resurrection, how he came out of that grave victoriously over death, hell, and the grave. So this rod of Aaron's is a type of Jesus in its sanctification, but also in its appearance. This rod was common in appearance to the other rods that were there. It looked like the other rods. It favored the other rods. Matter of fact, if you scrambled them up, you probably couldn't tell which was which. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. When Jesus walked on this earth at his first advent, you, he was just like any other man. If you put a crowd out there and put Jesus in the midst, he didn't stand out with some glow. He didn't stand out with some long hairdo. He didn't stand out with some peculiar look. No, he looked like every other man out there. He mixed in the crowd. He was common to the rest of the men on this earth. And to prove that, when they were going to arrest them, they didn't know which one to arrest. Judas said, I'll kiss him. I'll go up and kiss him. And the one I kiss, he's the one. And Judas, somebody said Judas is the only man that ever kissed the door of heaven and went to hell. Kiss the door of heaven and in hell right now. Isn't that amazing how people are so twisted in their minds and their hearts they can't really understand who Jesus is? He walked with him. He saw his miracles. He heard his words of truth and still went to hell because his heart, his heart never got changed. Somebody said, well, Judas was saved and he got lost again. No, sir. Uh-uh. He never called Jesus Lord. He was followed and he had part in some of the work, the labor, but he never dedicated his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a hypocrite. He was a put on. He was trusted. He carried the money bag. They trusted him more than any of the rest, but he was still lost. Don't ever say that Jesus saved anybody and then lost them because the Bible will contradict that. We read the other night, he said, I've lost none. I've lost none. And he'll never lose a soul. You can do what you will, but you'll never be lost if you've ever been saved because when you got saved, you got sealed. You got sealed with the Holy Ghost. And brother, that seal can't be broken. That's not a power in the universe that can break the seal of the Holy Spirit of God. I remember how I was so empty. I was so empty. And uh, of course, that's full of the devil. But then the Holy Ghost came along. He drove the devil out. And he took up occupancy in my soul and in my body. And when the devil came back and tried to get in, he couldn't get in. The Holy Ghost had me. I was sealed with the Holy Spirit. And the devil can't break that seal. He can't take the Holy Ghost out. So, brother, you and I are sealed, whether you want to believe it or not. If you're saved by the grace of God, whew, hey, glory. That'll take your breath when you realize how saved you are. How saved you are. If we'd start realizing how saved we are, we'd start shouting. I believe we'd have some of the dry hidest people in this church saying, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I believe you'd grunt. I believe you'd grunt. A little bit anyhow. Come on, dry hide. And wasn't you grunt? 
if you since you know that you're saved and sealed and sanctified and filled with the sweet Holy Ghost, and I'm not talking about that crowd of fanatics that go, oh, I'm saved, sealed, and sanctified, and filled with the sweet Holy Ghost. Y'all pray I endure now. Huh? No, we're already in. Already in. If you don't believe that, you don't believe the Bible. Like I preached the other night, you're going to call God a liar? I'm not going to call God a liar. I'm going to believe what God said. So even though Jesus was God, He appeared on this earth, the first advent, as a man. He was a man, but He was God-man. Judas kissed Him and identified Him for the soldiers. Now in John chapter 6, verse 41, the Bible says, The Jews then murmured at Him, because He said, I am the bread come down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus? the son of Joseph. That's where they were mistaken, right there. He was not the son of Joseph. He was the son of Mary by that birth, but uh, according to the flesh, but Joseph was not his father. The Holy Ghost was his father. They didn't have any knowledge of who he was. They said, whose father and mother we know. How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? How can he say, just Joseph's son, how could he say he came down from heaven? Boy, they're in the dark, aren't they? People today, tonight, are in that same darkness. They don't know who Jesus is. They don't recognize him to be eyewitness to people. And they'll say, well, oh, I believe in Jesus. I believe he lived. I believe he's on the earth. I heard some reporters one time giving some talk about Jesus, and they said he was a good man, and he had a good cause, but he was defeated and had to die. For his cause. That's the biggest lie the devil ever told. Brother Jesus did not die defeated. He did not die martyr. He died a sacrifice. He sacrificed for you and for me. And brother, that sacrifice on Calvary is valid. Whenever a sinner, I don't care how mean he is, sorry he is, where he's been, what he's done. Brother, when he comes to that flow, that blood that flowed down Calvary's brow, brother, he's saved. He's sanctified for sure. He's God's property from then on. Boy, I tell you, I feel like getting a hold of some of this old mountain preaching that they used to do up there. And old Zeb McDarris and some of those old preachers, boy, Zeb would get wound up and he'd get talking about that blood in Calvary. And he'd say, Youngins, hey, if you need him, get in this altar, you know. And I'd say, Boy, I tell that old man, telling it like it is. He's talking about blood. He's, he's talking about the blood of Jesus, not just any blood. So this rod of Aaron, it, was typ it typifies Christ in its sanctification, in its appearance, but also in its sacrifice. Like Jesus Christ, the rod was laid up with others. Now, Jesus was lifted up on the cross with others, other men. And my friend, they were criminals. Many of them were criminals. Jesus was not. He was dying for sin, not dying in sin. One uh, man on that cross beside him died in sin. The other died to sin. But Jesus died for sin. He died for your sin. He died for my sin. He died for all of our sin. Every sin, every sin, every sin that you and I have ever committed uh, or ever shall commit is under the blood. It's gone. Uh, where is it? You ask me where my sins are, they're under the blood. Praise God. He took it all away. Jesus was lifted up on the cross with other men. He was a special one, though, and he came for a special purpose, just like this particular rod was for a special purpose uh, other than the others, rather than the others. That rod could have been used in other ways, in many ways, and probably was, but it was given for a specific purpose. Jesus could give, do many things in many ways when he was on this earth. John said in the latter part of his writings, he said, uh, if Jesus, everything Jesus did when he was here could be written in books, the world would not be able to contain the books. Brother, he did many, many wonderful things. But his main purpose was to die and to live again. To die and to live again. No man taketh my life from me. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. Brother, there's nobody can do that. Now, we find in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 20, now once, you hear me? 
Now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So this rod was a type of his sanctification, his appearance, his sacrifice, but also the, his results. Aaron's rod differed from the others in that it budded, it blossomed, and it bore fruit. Dear friend, the great men of the Bible, as I've already mentioned, are all dead, but none of them gave up their life with the intention of taking it back again within their own self, within themselves. They didn't do that. None of them could. Great as Abraham was, you mean he couldn't? No. When he died, he died. He couldn't come back. The only way Abraham will ever come back is when God raises his body out of the grave. It's the only way he'll ever come back. Can't do it on his own. But Jesus didn't have to have anybody but himself. He said, I lay it down, I take it again. And brother, he did, and I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I believe every word he said. I believe him so much that I'm about to burst right now thinking about him, thinking about what he did for Sammy K. I didn't deserve it. I know I didn't deserve it, but he did it just for me. He did it for you, hallelujah, but he did it for me too. So these 12 rods appeared to look the same, but none could bud, none could blossom, none could bring forth fruit. Jesus laid down his life and took it again. His resurrection, his resurrection guarantees that he can raise us up too. We are going to be resurrected from the grave too. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So the rod had glorious results, and so did Jesus Christ at his own resurrection. There's no greater doctrine in the Bible than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If he had not risen from the grave, then salvation would not be finished. It would not be done. We couldn't go to heaven because there'd be no life. He had to conquer death, but he conquered death. Now think about it. <coughs> he conquered death for you and me. And then we see he's a type, or the rod's a type in its presence. It was laid up again. In Acts chapter 1, verse 9, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Jesus in, the, in a glorified body, back in heaven now, in the presence of his Father. God the Father and God the Son are never separated from each other. Jesus said, My Father and I are one. John 17, 4, I have glorified thee on the earth, he said to the Father. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Jesus was in eternity past. He's in eternity future. He's eternal. He was with the Father, but left the Father because the Father wanted somebody to save you and me. The Father wanted our redemption. The only one in the entire universe was Jesus. The only one that could pay the debt, the only one that could die for your sin and mine was him, was Jesus. And so he was willing to come. We see it here in the sanctification, appearance, in the sacrifice, the results, the presence, but then in its representation. Over there in verses 1 and through 3 that I read a while ago, take 12 rods, write thou every man's name upon his rod, and lay them up, where I will meet with you. Now every representative tribe of the, tri of the tribes had a rod. Now we all tonight represent him in, uh, in this earth while we are here on this earth. In Hebrews 8 and verse number 6, But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. And as I said a while ago, let me give you the scripture for what I said. 1 Timothy 2, 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. There it is. Mary's great. Mama's great. Daddy's great. Uncle's great. Grandpa's great. But there's just one mediator. When you pray, you don't pray through any saint. You don't have to put one on your dashboard. 
You don't have to put one. You know, I had that old saying in here. I had, the devil must have got him. I don't know where he went. I had that old image in here that day and kicked him around. He didn't do a thing to me. He's supposed to bring good luck and all that other kind of stuff. He didn't bring good luck nor bad luck because he can't. There's no such thing as luck for a Christian. Do you know that? There's no such thing as luck. It's God's providence that we're living in, not in some lucky thing or gambling. We don't gamble. We, we live by faith. And it's not a gamble to live by faith. It's wisdom. Whatsoever is not a faith is sin. Some in 1 Timothy 2, 5, he says he's the only mediator between God and men. Now, our names are written in heaven. That's a fact. You remember Jesus said, when they came back rejoicing and said the demons were subject to them, he said, that's fine, but hey, don't, don't shout over that. I'm paraphrasing. He said, say, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. He said that to his own people. So you and I have a right to rejoice because our names are in heaven. Think about it. Your name is in heaven right now. And nobody can take it out, thank God. So we're to rejoice because our names are there. We have taken his name also to be our Savior. In 2 Timothy 2.19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. He knows you. He knows me. I wonder, you know, if I get ready to die, if God's going to remember me or if he's going to forget me. He's not going to forget you. He knows who you are. He knows his own people. And to everyone that nameth the name of Jesus Christ, depart from iniquity. Jesus Christ is different than all other good men, all other good names. And we are to be different from the world as his representatives. Hebrews 7, 25, Wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Satisfaction, appearance, sacrifice, results, presence, representation, but then also fruitfulness. Verse 4, every rod represented a tribe. Each represented uh, 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 and, and was yielded up as a, a represent that particular tribe. Verse 4, laid up before the testimony. Now it was placed in the holy place in front of the veil, these rods. And those of us who are bearing the name of Jesus tonight, we're to be holy, yielded up to him tonight in our life, our Christian life. Not everyone that saith, Lord, Lord, is his but he knoweth those that are. And if you are saved tonight by the grace of God, he knows that. You don't have to worry about it. You know, people say and witness, and you'll find out people have all kinds of answers and questions, and they'll say, well, you know, I don't remember what I prayed. Well, you know, you really don't have to remember what you prayed. You have to remember who you believed in. Because, see, my friend, God remembers. God remembers what you prayed. He knows every word. I don't know all I said when I got saved. But I know I was crying and I was wanting Jesus in my heart. I didn't want to go to hell. I wanted to go to heaven. I was tired of sin. I was tired of it. I tried everything. It didn't work. But Jesus did work. And hey, he's been working all these 58 years. I'm still saved. I saved then. I'm still saved. I'll be saved the next time you see me. And if you don't see me down here, we'll meet in glory one day. Oh, God caused Aaron's rod to bud, blossom, and bear fruit. God gives life to us because uh, he is life. As I live, Jesus said, so shall you live. Aaron's rod yielded almonds, and Jesus is the first fruits that enables us to bear fruit for him. The rod with the name of the high priest on it was the one that was separated and different than all others. And he's our high priest. The Bible says, Jesus is our great eternal High priest. He never stopped to represent you. He never stopped to represent me. So the devil can't do anything about it. Like I said this morning in the message, I think the devil and the enemies of you and me don't like God's arrangements, but they can't change them. The devil can't change what God has wrought. God has done that. And I want to say this. We know that this rod typifies Jesus in its testimony. Verse 10. The Lord said, bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept. 
Now it was kept close to God for a testimony, and it must abide with the Father. Jesus is in the bosom of the Father tonight. We are in the Father's hand and in the hand of Jesus. And Jesus said, no man can pluck them out of my hand, and nobody can pluck them out of my Father's hand. So you and I are in His hand. Nobody can pluck us out of His hand. Dear Christian friend, tonight, by streaming or wherever you are, if you're believing in this work so salvation, and that you've got to be goody, goody, goody to go to heaven, wake up and trust Jesus. Trust Jesus alone for salvation. Jesus is the Savior, not you, not your good works. If it depended on me to stay saved, I wouldn't be saved the time I got to the door. I couldn't keep it. No way. I couldn't get it. You can't get it yourself. You can't keep it. But God gave it, and God's keeping you. Hallelujah. The more I study salvation, the more I want to cut a cartwheel and shout for the glory of God. Now, in His presence is fullness of joy. Verse 10, to be kept for a token against the rebels. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Plenty of people rebel against this great truth. But Jesus is a witness against the devil and against evil. When the devil comes and says, you're not saved, where's your God? Just wait just a second. God's fixing to tell the devil off. He's fixing to tell the devil where you are and who you belong to. And if you look into his word, he'll tell the devil. My goodness, to him that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast out. How you like that, Slewfoot? How you like that? You don't think I'm saved? God said if I'd come to him, he'd save me. So you're a liar. God's true. I got God's word on it. Got God's word on it. So we stand fat, uh, pat on the word of God. So then Jesus is a witness against the devil. And we are to also be witnesses for him. And as his living and fruitful rod was an evidence that God had chosen Aaron, Jesus, God's only begotten son, is evidence that God has chosen him for us. And he has chosen us because in 1 Peter 2, 9, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Why don't we accept that? He has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So I'm going to go out of here tonight shouting the victory in my heart that I'm in the light because he told me I was. Aaron's rod is a beautiful type of Christ in many ways, and I have named some of these right here. Sanctification, appearance, sacrifice, <coughs> excuse me, results, presence, representation, faithfulness, testimony, many other ways. But Jesus is the one that is really for, an all, for all sinners everywhere. He died, he was buried, he arose again. He budded, he blossomed, he brought forth fruit. You and I are fruits of His grace and His mercy tonight. And if you're here tonight and you're not in His family, you need to be. Let's stand our feet. And if you need to come to this altar for any reason, it's open for prayer, for whatever, whatever you need. Salvation, rededication, God's here. And He said, Him that cometh, I'll in no wise cast out. So if you need to come tonight, you feel free to do so as I pray you may come. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in church today. We thank you for what you've done for us so far, blessing us, supplying needs, giving us a vision, uh, supplying needs so much that, Lord, we can't even count them. We can't count your blessings. But, Lord, we are thankful tonight for all your graces and mercies that have been extended to us. And we ask you now to lead this church, bless it, guide it, protect it, fill it with the Holy Spirit, and let us be in the center of God's directive will when you come back again. I'd want to be in your will, whether it be directive or permissive, but I choose.